what's going on everybody i just want to start off by saying happy new year um i'm not really a resolution guy i don't really make resolutions it's not really my thing but just for transparency i did get up you know i started reading started doing stuff like that i did kind of readjust a little bit guys to to make my own kind of like uh uh, adjustments here you know getting up daily every morning a little earlier than i normally would just be able to read be able to do some journaling that kind of stuff but so like i said guys i'm not really a big resolution person myself but if you guys made resolutions let me know what you guys made i can support you i'll do the best i can i don't have a million dollars guys i wish i could support you that way but you know i'm in that boat with you all right y'all happy new years and let's get into today's topic What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL world? How you doing, division rivals? This is Stephen Hyder with Gate City Sports Channel, the sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is you get around to watching this. Once again, guys, my name is Stephen Hyder, and this is Gate City Sports Channel. Okay, so today's topic. I want to talk about receiver play, right? Um, quarterbacks and receivers are the two things that I really make my bread and butter on when it comes to breaking down the film on it. It's the two positions I personally have the most experience coaching, breaking down the film on. I got a little skill when it comes to offense and defensive line. I've definitely coached in the secondary before I've been a corners coach. I've done a little bit of that kind of stuff, guys, but definitely the bread and butter of what I do is quarterbacks and receivers. And there's one player that lost favor here in Philadelphia that I really want to discuss today, and that's John Hightower. And it's it's a weird kind of ebb and flow with John Hightower because on one hand, I'll admit, I wasn't probably the highest on Hightower coming out of the draft, right? I mean, I liked the kid. I told you guys that I had watched film on Hightower. He had crossed my radar. This was a kid that I thought had really good game speed, and I thought he ran a very diverse route tree. But I did tell you guys, I was very upfront and forward with you guys in that video, and I'll link it at the very end of this video for you guys if you want to see it. I told you guys that he has a weird hand and eye coordination issue that you could see at Boise State. I mean, the kid is very fast. He's got speed. And he gets separation. He's a good route runner, but something's missing there. Something's missing in the hand and eye coordination department. I'll say this about John Hightower. I'm not ready to give up on him, guys. I honestly think if you go through his film, there are a lot of positives. Now, I've heard some rumors that maybe he didn't handle uh, Rager and some of the guys coming back with the best you know, the best class, if you will, or, or not, that's not the right way of saying it. With, with You know, he, he didn't handle it in the right way. I, I think he was a little disappointed in maybe having snaps taken away. He's, some guys have said that he showed a little immaturity. I don't know how true that kind of stuff is, guys. Like, I tend to take all that crap with a grain of salt because, you know what I mean? Like, who knows what really happened? But he's got some things in his game he needs to work on. But the one thing I'll say about John Hightower is this, guys. He is a very good vertical separator. He gets separation on vertical routes. As a matter of fact, outside of maybe DJX, he was definitely the best on the Eagles this past year at gaining vertical separation. Now, what he does with the vertical separation, that's something that needs to be worked on in the offseason. But I'm just saying this, guys. Don't give up on him yet. I do like the three young guys we have in Rager, Hightower, and Watkins. I actually think there's something there. You can add Fulgham to that list, too. But without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get into some film study, guys. So as I began to research this topic, I ran across an article by E.J. Smith of the Philadelphia Inquirer. And the title of the article, if you guys want to go look at it, and it's behind me, is What Advanced Numbers Say About the Eagles Wide Receivers, Carson Wentz's Turnaround, and the Defense from the Early Birds, okay? E.J. Smith wrote it. This was in mid-October, like October 13th he wrote it, okay? What I found really compelling about this article is it lined up what I was seeing on film. And you're going to see that in a second, guys. But what should be noticed or notable about this is, is that at the time when they were tracking through next-gen stats, and here's the thing, you cannot track through next-gen stats right now. 
the closest thing you're going to get to next-gen stats, that's a free service, guys, is going to be Pro Football References Advanced Receiving Statistics, okay? So, at the time, next-gen stats had him at an average separation of 3.7 yards, okay? Clearly in the top half of the league. That's an incredible amount of separation right there, guys. And then to make matters more, you know, kind of interesting or, or more impressive, if you will, when they looked at his average air yards per target, it was 18.8. Now, like I said, you can't go reference that now, although I'll show you, you know, you can see behind me the actual article that I'm referencing, but I can show you pro football references they have a, a similar metrics that they use to measure receivers, okay? It's not average air yards to the sticks. It's, it's none of that stuff. It's, not, it's, it's none of that. But what they do use is the average depth of target, which is a very similar metrics. And guess who was number one in the NFL? Mr. John Hightower. His average depth of target was 22.2, meaning this kid was targeted quite often downfield. The, you know, this is a, a very vital part of, I think, of our offense going forward. This kid has got to develop because him with Quez Watkins, with Rager, with Greg Ward Jr., with Fulgham, I think this can be a lot better receiving core than people think. I know a lot of guys are like, oh, we got to go get a receiver in this draft. I'm not saying you don't take a chance or an opportunity if, if the right guy crosses the radar at the right value, but I think we have more answers than people think. With that said, let's get into the film and I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm going to give you the good, the bad, the ugly. You're going to see it all here, guys. All right? So let's get to the film. All right, Eagles come out in Doug Peterson's favorite formation here, 12-man personnel. They got Richard Rodgers, and it's probably Dallas Goddard on the field at this point. Two receivers on the field. If you look up to your what would be the boundary side, okay, so your top of your screen, offensive right, you're going to see that's John Hightower. So let's watch him as he comes into motion. This is called a fly motion because you're going from one side of the field all the way over to the other side of the field. This is beautiful because we can see that they're in zone because nobody follows John Hightower. And this is a dangerous situation for a team if you got Hightower in movement at the hike because, as you're going to see here, this kid has absolute wheels. Look at the separation he gains between him and the corner there. Once he's got this ball, surprisingly, Hightower's pretty good with Yak yards after the catch. I'm not going to say that he's a Anquan Bolden trucky type. Obviously, he's small of frame, but he's very hard to bring down because he's very slippery. He's very loose. He's he's very agile, and this is the good. I mean, this is what this kid can offer you. This is something that I think you work towards in the future. I mean, this shows you that this kid has the ability to be a vertical threat for the Philadelphia Eagles. number two eagles come out this time 11 man personnel if you look to the bottom of your screen the boundary side you're going to see you have john hightower here lined up this time on the line of scrimmage as that traditional boundary side receiver the x roll so he can't move can't use him as a movement piece now what you're going to see here is they're not really challenging they're not up on him they're not pressing him they're playing off coverage this play drives me crazy with Doug because I think he does this a little too often, but this is just a, a straight-up fly route, okay? He's, we're just running a fly pattern here with Hightower. If your line can hold, I think we have the receivers to be deadly with this, but your line has to hold because if, they, if there's a cushion, you have to make up ground, which means it's going to take this play at least probably four seconds to come to fruition, which means you got to hold for a while. Now, here's the thing. The line holds. Hightower gets even with this corner, and it's all over. I mean, Hightower is absolutely fast. I mean, watch him blow right past the cornerback here. Nice catch. This was a good job this time of keeping his eyes on the ball, securing the catch. You know, he's not, like I said, he's surprisingly decent at yak. He's not the greatest yak receiver. I mean, he's not going to run you over, but he's a little wiry. He's a little slippery, right? I mean, he's you know, he's got that little wiriness to him where he's hard to bring down, but once again, man, I mean, this just shows you this kid is a vertical threat in this Eagles offense. The bad. So 
this is a criticism that I'm going to start off with lightly. It's a light criticism of him. And I think this applies to all the Eagles' young receivers, from Rager to Quez Watkins to Hightower. I think Rager is certainly the best at this right now. I think he's the most advanced at beating uh, tight man coverage. But with that said, even Rager needs a lot of work in this regard. Obviously, you guys can tell what I'm alluding to here is beating tight man coverage. The Eagles come out in 11-man personnel here. Okay, what you can see here is that there's really no boundary or field side per se because the ball is pretty much right in the middle of the yard line. But if I were to divide this up, I would say that he's actually playing the boundary role because of the side of the running back and the tight end. But there's really no right one there. It's, it's just it's an even across, okay? So look at your corner. This means he is being challenged. This is all about what you do coming off the snap. What do you do to beat this in the route? You've got to be really good in your first few steps. We can see here he doesn't gain or get anything here because he just doesn't have the physical frame nor the ability yet to use his hands to fight through or to sell it on his routes yet. This is an area where it has to develop because you can see as this goes down the field, he's not really gaining any separation away from that cornerback. This is you know, going to cause pretty much a sack to occur because there's just nowhere to put this ball as a result of them not being able to get off of man cover. Ladies and gents, the ugly, ugly of the film, okay? Listen, Hightower is very talented, but there's no doubt this kid's got a lot to work on to be an NFL-level wide receiver. This situation, Eagles come out once again, guys. We're in 11-man personnel, one running back, one tight end. Uh, the top side of your screen is the boundary side. The bottom side of your screen is your field side. In this particular situation, you got Hightower playing the role of the flanker receiver. Here's the deal. Pittsburgh tries to come out. Looks like it's a little disguised coverage to me. They try to make you think they're in quarters or a cover two. But judging by the way that that boundary side, that top side safety, plays Fulgham, I'm going to guess this is really a cover six. It's a little argumentative, and you'd have to hear their defensive coordinator talk, but they approach it more like a cover six than certainly a cover two. I mean, you could argue it's a cover two, but in a cover two, you expect the safety to take Ertz. If they're in like a, a man situation, why the way they divide this up instead of the way he reacts and the way he takes on Fulgham there. So here's your situation as it plays out. Hightower is going to do a really good job because this corner is playing a bail technique. So let me just show you that real quick and playing that bail technique. All right, you can see he starts to bail out there. Now at the snap, Fulgham going to do a pretty good job here of getting separation. I mean, he does a pretty good job with this route stem. Now, before we play this out, I'm going to tell you to begin with. Wentz could have thrown this ball sooner. He could have put this ball placement easier for Hightower to make a play on the ball. But in saying that, Hightower should have made this catch, guys. Like, this is the situation where I'm talking about where there's something weird about his hand and eye coordination. You just got to come down with this catch in the end zone, man, against a defense like Pittsburgh. It sucks we didn't make this play because I felt like we had an opportunity here to steal one against a really, really good team and a really good defense. ugly ugly example guys and i'll get to some concluding thoughts for you so right here you can see the eagles come out once again we're in 11 man personnel this one's a little harder to distinguish but it's easy if you look at it so let's just draw a line across the screen so you can distinguish what is field side from what is boundary side boundary side is at the bottom of your screen field side's at the top of your screen another way of saying this is offensive left is the field offensive right is the boundary guys all right your seven men on the line of scrimmage obviously your five offensive linemen but then you got Dallas Goddard, who's up at the top side of your screen on the field side, who's in tight to the formation. And then on the bottom side of your screen, on the boundary side, making it your X receiver, you have Travis Fulgham there. Now your two slots slash kind of Y roles are Greg Ward Jr. and then John Hightower. Let's look down to the bottom where Hightower is. John's going to come in motion here. Once again, we have a fly motion situation, just like we saw before. I showed you a previous clip of this where he got a huge gainer off of this. Once again, man, this is hard to defend with Hightower because Dallas is in a zone. And I got to be honest with you, Hightower has got serious wheels. This kid is fast. Let's just watch how fast he gains, you know, how fast he gets up on this corner. He's got a little distance. He's playing a little off of Hightower. 
Here's the problem you keep seeing repeatedly with Hightower, though, and this is something he has to work on in the offseason, because I do believe, like I've said before, this kid has talent. But the hand-and-eye coordination thing is frustrating, because there's just no excuse to why he couldn't make a better play on this ball. I, it, this is going to be frustrating with this kid. He's got to get better at this aspect of his game going forward. Final thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. First off, thank y'all for sticking around and making it this long into the video because I appreciate y'all. But here's the deal. Let me break this down with some further advanced analytics for you guys. This is what y'all know me for. Out of the eight receivers I measured, John Hightower had the lowest quarterback rating out of all eight of them. His quarterback rating was a 19.1. Don't read too far into that. Some of that has to do with the difficulty level of the passes and, and things like that. Some of it has to do with his play, though, too, guys. I mean, I just showed you. Like, he struggled a little bit. With that said, yeah, it's bad. Like, I'm not going to say that he didn't underperform. I'm not going to say that I'm not a little disappointed. But I'm also not going to sit and act like this kid doesn't have talent and, and he can't turn this around with a, an appropriate offseason in development here. I mean, here's the deal. We got, you know, he had 10 out of 27, so 27 targets, 10 catches. I mean, look, there's definitely promise. You look at a guy like Quez Watkins. Quez Watkins' quarterback rating right now is 156.2, but I want to save that for his video. But he's only had eight attempts, guys. But he's, like I told you guys, Quez may not run a very diverse route tree, but when I broke down film of Quez Watkins, the route tree that he ran, he was very good at selling the routes. That was the one thing I kept trying to get to people's attention. Um, out of the guys with a lot of targets, Fulgham and Ward Jr. were the two that really played well and, and should have been getting more playing time down the stretch, in my opinion. Fulgham had a 97.2. So out of all the guys with a lot of attempts, he had the highest rating. Quarterback rating, he was 37 completions on 65 attempts. Um, targets, I should say, not attempts. Ward Jr. had 52 receptions on 76 um, targets. He had a 97.1 quarterback rating when being thrown to. So, I mean, look, I mean, guys were there. I mean, uh, Djax was next up with an 81.6, guys, but he only had 26 targets on the year. Alshon was next with a 71. He only had 13 attempts on the year, so a little grain of salt with those guys. Rager was the next guy up at 61.9, so basically a 62 rating. He had 53 attempts on the year, so definitely targeted a little more, especially out of all the rookies here. Then we get J.J. Arthaga Whiteside, who had a 33.3. On this season. And then you got to high towers, 19.1, guys. My opinion, some of my concluding thoughts are is that some of the, you know, like we can get down on high tower. I still think high tower has a, you know, opportunity. I mean, don't get me wrong, high tower has a lot of negatives I could pull here, guys. I'll give you one more film to relate to here. But this is high tower giving up, you know, on his targets four times the ball was picked off. Some of this is on the quarterback's decision making, some of this is on scheme and design. Some of this is on circumstance, but some of this is on Hightower, too. He's got to get better at this. There's just no doubt about it. But I do think that the, the coaching staff has to be better with player selection. Like, you know, look, why wasn't Fulgham and, and were, why were these two kind of disappearing down the stretch? They should have been getting the ball more. Let's go to Richard Rodgers. Richard Rodgers, 134.5 on the season on 31 attempts. He had 31 targets, I should say, 24 receptions, okay? Got it, 103.6, 65, uh, uh, 65 targets, 46 receptions, right? We weren't putting guys like Boston Scott, 31 targets 23 reception 101.3 we weren't always getting the ball in the playmakers hands and that's something i think going forward has to be accounted for when we talk about this kind of stuff guys all right y'all these are my concluding thoughts i'm going to do this on each of the receivers for you guys we're going to break down some film on this stuff it's going to keep happening throughout the off season so leave your questions leave your comments down below guys i appreciate y'all tuning in but i gotta get out of here because it is new year's eve technically right now and uh, my wife's going to kill me in a minute so all right, y'all. I'll see y'all in the next video.